Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Holy Family Church. This is the third Sunday of Easter, um, and a big welcome to the folks that are watching us online in the domestic churches. We're glad to have you with us. There are lots of things in the uh, bulletin, so you should take it home with you. I'm not going to go over it, but one thing I am going to mention is our general parish meeting to present the financial picture at St. Cateria Parish. All are invited to a general parish meeting at Holy Family Church site this year at 2 p.m. on Sunday, April 28th. This is your chance to understand what the financial situation is and where the money is going or not going, whatever. But uh, it's your parish and you contribute to it, so it would be nice if you came and listened and ask questions. So I'll bring that to your attention next week too. And I guess if Father's ready, we'll start. Again, by acknowledging the land in which we gather is the traditional unceded and surrendered territory of the Willis de Guic. Territory is covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which the Willis de Guic Mi'kmaq and Pesmaquoddy peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1725. Treaties did not deal surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Willis de Guic Mi'kmaq and Pesmaquoddy title and established the rules for an ongoing relationship between nations. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Happy Easter to you all. Happy Easter to all. It just keeps on going on. It's forever, but <laughs> Easter is forever. It never, never is not Easter. Because once Easter happens, it's a forever thing. So uh, we recognize that our Christ has risen. And that's a great gift to us all because uh, it makes Christ available to us for all situations in our life that require us to... Uh, be grateful and to praise and give thanksgiving. It's also a presence that's available to us for assisting with our woundedness and our struggles and our challenges. Also a presence to guide our way and to join our gifts to the gifts of others, especially as peacemakers and, and uh, gift givers to the vulnerable. So for ways in which uh, we struggle to join our gifts to others and to open ourselves to that grace of the risen Christ, we ask God's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you come to heal the sick in all of creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you come to forgive us of our failings and to help us to move onward into new decisions. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you love us eternally and walk with us into eternal life, all of us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us everlasting life. Glory to God, God in highest, and on earth, peace to the people of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, and the King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Son of God, Son of the Father, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lord, 
Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. May your people exalt forever, loving God, and renew youthfulness of spirit. As the rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Chapter 3 of the Acts of the Apostles describes how Peter and John healed the lame man who sat begging each day at the gate of the temple. The people were astonished at this miracle. Peter used the opportunity to give a sermon encouraging the people to believe in Jesus. We hear a portion of that sermon now. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. At the temple gate, Peter addressed the people. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant, Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have the murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God had raised from the dead. To this, we are witnesses. And now, brothers and sisters, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophets, that Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. God. The responsorial psalm, that the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Answer me when I call, O God of might. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. There are many who say, oh that, the, oh, that we might see some good, that the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. I will both lie down and sleep in peace, for you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. Let the light of your face shine on us, O Lord. Each Sunday during this Easter season, we are reading from the first letter of John. It was written for the community from which fourth gospel emerged. At the time, this community was seriously divided. Some members believed that as long as you had faith in Jesus, it didn't matter what you did in daily life. Today's passage deals with that issue. A reading from the first letter of St. John my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Now by this we may be sure that we know him, if we obey his commandments. Whoever says, I have come to know him, but does not obey his commandments, is a liar. And in such a person, the truth does not exist. But whoever obeys his word, truly in this person, the love of God has reached perfection. By this, we may be sure that we are in him. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. 
Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples told the eleven and their companions what had happened on the road to Emmaus and how Jesus had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, why are you frightened, and why, why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I, myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the Scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Couldn't think of much to say this week, so I just brought this book to read it to you. So. <laughs> Anyway, uh, one of the uh, spiritual writers that I've read often, and uh, especially through the 80s and 90s, and I think I get introduced to him maybe right over here at the rectory when I was with John Jennings in 1982 as a seminarian. Spent a year here and getting trained up for my life. And uh, it's uh, Henry Nowen, Henry Nowen, I call him. And uh, he passed away in 1996, I think. But a wonderful spiritual writer. And uh, you've probably heard lots about him, but uh, one of the things that a piece of wisdom that he gave was a description of the Last Supper and also connected to the road to Emmaus, which is mentioned in today's Gospel, about the bread in the Eucharist and how it's connected to us who are also the bread of life. And so he gives this explanation, which I think is quite brilliant. He said, the Last Supper in Luke's version as well as in Mark's, more specifically in Mark's, it says at the Last Supper Jesus took bread, then it says he blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to the others. And then with the two disciples, uh, you know the story, uh, after Jesus was crucified they head to the Las Vegas of the time called Emmaus, and on the road uh, Jesus joins them as a, as a stranger, as the risen Christ, he joins them. They don't recognize him, but they have this conversation. He opens up the scriptures and that type of thing. They talk about the events of the, what had happened. And then as they get near the village, they ask him to stay with them, with them for the night and to share a meal with them. And then it says at the meal, he took the bread, he blesses it, breaks it, and gives it to him. The very same thing. That, uh, that happened with the institution of the Eucharist in Mark and Luke. And so uh, the two disciples come from that experience, reflecting on it, at what happened to them in that, in that experience. And they say that their heart burned within them as he was 
sharing the, the scriptures as the bread was being broken. And then they are sent back. They're given back into the, they head back to Jerusalem to be with the other disciples. So they're sent back into that with that good news. So what's important here for us that we can uh, take for our lives? And Henry Nouwen says that just like with the bread, Jesus does the same thing with us, the people, the very same thing. First of all, Jesus takes us, meaning Jesus chooses us as God's beloved. And all that about being loved by God, he goes on about that we are the beloved of God, unconditionally loved no matter what, and that's the way God takes us. God chooses us all, all the time, unconditionally, which is, uh, which is important for us in our well-being. And then it says Jesus blesses us, just like the bread, and recognize, helps us to recognize the many blessings that are ours in our life. The, the blessings of nature. Wasn't it a great blessing to see the eclipse and to see all the excitement around it and all of God's creation, just to focus on that one aspect? That uh, just features one of the great blessings we get every day around the natural world in which we live. That uh, Jesus helps us to see uh, the blessing of our personal gifts, all unique, uni uniquely gifted we are, and we have our senses, our five senses, body, minds, spirits, souls, relationships, the list goes on and on. And uh, that's important, God chooses, we are blessed, and then it says God is with us in the breaking of the bread. We're also people who are broken and, and wounded, and we have illness, and we have struggles and pains, and that that too is part of our human journey in which Christ is involved. And so now one points that out, that we're, we're chosen, we're blessed, we're broken, and we're given. Jesus gives us into the world as human beings. And what does that mean? As we go into the world, we're given with those very same things that that has happened. We're, we go into the world with our chosenness. It's quite something to know that we're the beloved of God, that we're, we have worthiness, that we are lovable, and to take that in. And it helps us to see it and help other people to see it. That's what we can give to others once we have grasped that within ourselves. We then extend that to other people. And then we take, a, we take the sense of being blessed in this world. We take that to others as well. And just our conversations help others to see that what a blessing, just what a blessing we have is, is to live in this world. And what a gift it is to have our senses, what it is to have a relationship. And that is what we, that's what we give, that's what we take into the world. But also our brokenness is, uh, can become a gift of uh, what we take into the world. And, uh, and we often hear the word wounded healer and that type of thing. But if there's anything that now one really emphasized, because he had a lot of a lot of struggle in his own life. And uh, it was out of his own brokenness that he's able to teach with such gift and wisdom to us. And uh, this is a book that uh, it has uh, one year's worth of uh, re little daily reflections. And um, it, uh, I won't read them all to you, but there's one here. On, uh, and it says, wounded healers. And this is what he meant by that. Nobody escapes being wounded. We are all unit, wounded people, whether physically, emotionally, mentally, or spiritually. The main question is not, how can we hide our wounds so we don't have to be embarrassed, but how can we put our woundedness into the service of others? When our wounds cease to be a source, source of shame and become a source of healing, we have become wounded healers. And then he makes the connection to Jesus. Jesus is God's wounded healer. Through his wounds, we are healed. Jesus' suffering death brought joy in life. His humiliation brought glory. His rejection brought a community of love. As followers of Jesus, we can also allow our wounds to bring others healing.
recognizing that there's many ways of expressing truth about God and various cultures, religions, denominations. And we have this one as well that uh, speaks beautiful truths, and so let us pray it together. I believe in God. Loving God, we present to you these needs, always knowing that you are open-eared and open-heart with our situations, and we ask that you would also use our gifts to assist you in responding to the prayers that we make. We pray for a deeper awareness and learning in light of the truth and reconciliation calls to action, and that we continue to pave a path forward for justice and healing. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. We pray to St. Kateri that we may find fulfillment in who we are and ask Jesus to bring healing to those who are carrying heavy burdens. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that we continue to provide care for those who are in need of the basic necessities, such as food, clothing, shelter, and warmth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Sudan, Ukraine, and the Holy Land and especially the children, that leaders of all nations will facilitate access to humanitarian aid and work in search of peaceful solutions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Mother Earth. May we commit to being the good stewards God calls us to be. May we be aware of our carelessness and our wastefulness, and may we commit to the changes that need to be made. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord. The Mass intentions for this weekend are tonight at Timmy Toner, tomorrow morning, Pauline Francis, and here tomorrow at for Stanley Ramroop. We pray we pray for all we pray Lord, for Lord. Lord. It's missing. <laughs> we pray for all those who are sick and in hospital, and especially for Hannah Mizkatska, Anna Dweron. Jennifer Halfyard and Patty Sowers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died, uh, especially for John Dracena's brother. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Does anyone have a special intention that they would like prayers for? We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, for and without end. Amen.
Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God. The Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of God's name for our good and good of all of God's church. Receive, loving God, we pray these offerings of your people. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit and perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. So with all the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes from the Lord. Hosanna in the you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith When we eat this bread, this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, loving God, the bread of life and cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of love and peace together with Francis, our Pope, Christian, our Bishop, with all those who lead all of your faith families of great diversity and beauty and goodness, and all your people. Remember our sisters and brothers who have gone before us in the hope of the resurrection. Remember Dr. Joe McDougall, Patrick Nelson, Tim Toner, others who died these past days. Walk on them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary, the mother of God, and with Joseph, her spouse, with all the apostles and saints, St. Gadri, Tikawitha, all who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With openness to receive God's daily bread as well as to share it with others through our being chosen and through our being blessed and being broken. We may bring the food of God into the, our lives or through our choices. We pray for this as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from all evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on our faith, and graciously grant us your peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
And the peace of the Lord be with all of you. So for each other, son of peace and a happy Easter and all those good things. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let's stand and pray. Look with kindness upon your people, loving God, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May God's blessing be upon you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for coming. Nice to see you all. Say a little prayer for my hockey pool. No, no, my golf pool. I got hockey on my mind. I got to start acting more like a Canadians fan, start getting golf in my mind, but I guess it's not going to happen for a while. Now. At least don't get to brag very much about being in the playoffs. Montreal's not there, so I'm not going to mention a thing. I'll wait till the playoffs are over to see how it goes. So. <laughs> we have yourselves a great week. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and one another. Thank you.